Hey, Leafy, you heard the rumor about us? What? What rumors? Well, there's uh, a lot of rumors. Some even uh, including polar bears and uh, funky mushrooms. Uh, mm -hmm. But the one I'm thinking about is the one saying you are not good enough to build a building for your terrain. Eh, what do you think of that? What? I am not? I know I'm gonna make a log cabin in a Nordic fashion. <laughs>Hey folks, my name is Leif and welcome to my channel called Devs and Dice, where I paint miniatures or craft terrain for the tabletop. Today I'm going to show you how I scratch built this wonderful log cabin. The roof comes off to expose the loft and interior, and of course the walls come off as well for ease of play. Now before we get into it, I see that only a fraction of my viewers are subscribed to my channel. Do me a favor and subscribe. This content is free and you can change your mind whenever you want. Alright, with that, let's make this awesome cabin. Alright, so out comes my Proxon Hotwire Foam Cutter. Now I set my guide to about quarter of an inch, which will be a measurement that I'm going to be using quite a lot in this build. Now, what I'm aiming to do is to create essentially staves for the logs that are quarter of an inch times quarter of an inch times whatever length I need them to be. I also found a scrap piece of XPS foam, which I'm going to use as my foundation. It just so happens to be um, cut to around 7 times 5 inches. At this point, I had my logs cut out to shape, which matched nicely with the size of the foundation. That being said, this was where some mistakes or learnings started to pop up. Now, I wanted my foundation to be made out of rocks in some way, and my first instinct was to draw them in using a sharpie. Now, after that, I came in with one of my hot, uh, well, well, it's not a hot wire tool, but foam cutting tools, uh, which is a handheld one, and I tried to sort of just exaggerate the pattern a little bit more. I wasn't super happy about that, but I figured I would soldier on. I started on working with the actual wood floor and just drawing in some planks using a mechanical pencil. Now to be able to exaggerate the sort of uh, space between the planks, I just scored each space lightly using a blade. Now afterwards, I'm going to come in with a pencil or uh, something like that just to sort of widen that groove a little bit. And I did the same thing with the plankings going the other way. Now to get that wood texture, there's multiple ways you can do this. I know about people using mechanical pencils or using wire brushes. But I actually prefer this handheld foam cutter because it really gets a nice detail to it and also there's no dust, which is a nice bonus. Here you can see that I'm starting to shape out the logs that are quite square now, but I just sort of try to, you know, round them off a little bit and then getting some wood grain onto them as well. I wasn't sure on how much timber I needed, but I figured rather more than less, and I can always find a use for more timber. So at this point I had all of my timber textured and ready to go. Now my first immediate instinct was to glue the logs down to the foundation. Thankfully my inner game designer and uh, try-hard voice convinced me otherwise. But Leif, what if the players want to go inside the building? The solution was to use a bunch of magnets, which the good folks over at the Army Painter sent me a while back. Now, I have never worked with magnets on terrain, but I figured, what the heck, let's at least try to make the walls detachable from the foundation. Now, I started out by 
thinking about where I could have these magnets, and the answer was, of course, in the corners underneath the walls of a building. So I just used that handheld uh, foam cutter thing and burnt holes large enough for me to put in some hot glue and place in the magnets in there. This was a little bit finicky, but you know, just take it easy and nice and slow and you'll get a nice placement of these magnets. Now it was time to really start thinking about how I wanted to build the wooden structure, the wall specifically. And up until this point, I had actually been watching quite a few videos on YouTube on how people actually build these log cabins. Now, I wanted it to be as real as possible, so I just used that handheld cutter to literally melt out half, um, about half, I would say, on each of the logs, just so I can make a nice link between them and they could intersect each other in that characteristic way. Just to seal this, I'm gonna be using Army Painters foam glue which is part of their game masters kits uh, series for anyone who l is looking to start building terrain now once i had the actual first frame up and well somewhat done i started thinking about okay good how do i attach this to a magnet and the answer was quite easy. I would be using some pins. Now, the good benefit about these pins are that once you sort of push them through, you can actually use the pins to strengthen the corners, which was, in my case, an added benefit. So, with the first layer done, I quickly started on the second layer, third layer, fourth layer, up until I think it was eight layers of logs to define the walls. Now, you remember that I said it was a quarter inch? That means that the walls are two inches tall. Now that I had the constructions of the walls and the foundation mostly done, it was time to start thinking about the construction of the roof. I felt somewhat unsure, and since the angle of sort of incline was quite important. I, I sketched a few times on paper just to be sure. I felt almost like I was stuck in a sort of analysis paralysis situation. Well, lucky for all of us, the All Father pushed me and it was now time to build that damn roof. Looking at this now, I really don't understand why I was so concerned. It was really a simple thing to just build an A-frame, because I knew I was going to be covering this with logs and whatnot, so what I really needed was just a solid base structure. Now for this, I cut out two pieces of XPS foam that would be the sides of the roof, and for the actual large surface of the roof, I went with foam core that I had in my, you know, left in my scrap pile, which was kind of nice. And it's funny because almost everything in this build, when it comes to XPS foam, is actually scrap pieces that I had lying around. So in that sense, I'm actually cleaning up in my hobby space and making something more usable and something I can be proud of. Here, I'm actually cutting off some of the edges after I had dry fitted it, just so I can get a nice snug fit. Now the basic structure of the log cabin was done, which I have to tell you, it felt awesome. But now, I had to focus on some exterior details on the cabin. I wanted to challenge myself and make it really look good. My ideal situation would be if I could hide as many seams as possible with, you guessed it, more timber. You remember when I said that I cut out a bunch of timbers? Well, I'm happy I did at this point. Now, covering, you know, the parts with timber, here it was definitely beneficial for me to look at some references and actually pay attention to how these sort of buildings are built. This is at least the only way I can, well, be perceived to have the knowledge of a carpenter without actually being a carpenter. 
Another aspect of this build was that I wanted the roof to come off as well. So I used some of those pins and I just put them on from above and down. And then I inserted some smaller magnets onto the roof. Once I had the larger beams in place for the sides of the roof, I essentially cut some in half and I just covered the rest of the roof with these beams and cut them to size. Very important. And I think the result is actually quite nice. Now, there still was plenty of uh, things that were exposed, uh, so I covered that up with beams as well. You'll note that on the top of the roof, I did that nice X sort of pattern, because I've seen that with a lot of Norse or old Nordic cottages and buildings, and I just figured I would pay homage to that. The actual slit at the top of the roof is filled with a larger beam that ties everything nicely together, in my opinion. I added some fascia boards to the sides of the roof just to sort of cover up that last of the foam core. And with that, I could really see it starting to take shape. It was actually looking like a proper building. And I was super happy at this point how everything just came together. And the magnets, well, let's just say they worked somewhat. I'm going to be dealing with that a little bit later. Okay, most of the exterior was now taken care of. Well, kind of. I knew there were some major details left, such as the chimney, interior details, and most scary of all cutting holes in what I had made so far for windows and an entrance. Ugh. Using techniques I already gone through in this video, I constructed a loft that would sort of act as a second story. Just to make this look a little bit better, I added some sort of railings and then some sort of ramshackle ladder leading up to the second floor. Now came the moment I had been dreading, to cut holes for the entrances and for the windows. And again, looking back at this, I'm not really sure what I was so concerned about. If you just have a sharp blade and you take it nice and easy and methodical, you will get a nice result. Here you can see that once I've cut the window frames, I actually put in uh, a beam in the middle of them. That I'm going to remove later. Now I knew I wanted to have some windows, and since the window frames were so dear, I really couldn't be using XPS foam for that, so I went with some matchsticks. And also, here, I want to just give a warning. Here, I didn't think about what I was doing. What I'm using is actually UV resin, and I didn't have any nitrate gloves, unfortunately. So please, if you're going to do this, use gloves, because it is resin. Meanwhile, you can see that I created a sort of open, uh, what do you call it, open fireplace, which I didn't like, and I'm going to redo that later. I also cut a basic shape for the chimney. This I'm doing just to have a nice sort of base to work from. And uh, when I had that, I could also cut out the hole on the roof. Which, I'm gonna be honest, I was actually surprised on how well everything came together. You can really see the potential of the building now. Meanwhile, I had cut out, uh, well, a lot of small bricks. Now, these bricks are about half a centimeter times half a centimeter times one centimeter. And I just covered everything that I, well, wanted to with these, including the open fireplace. I didn't like it, so I built up a new one using these foam bricks. And I covered also the chimney and everything, so all of the build would have the same kind of bricks, which I think made it look a lot better. Individual bricks is surely the way to go for me at least. Here you can see everything coming together and it's looking quite nice, I have to say. And you can actually remove the bottom parts from each other. But 
I did feel like the magnets at the top really didn't do their job. And that's when I figured out that, you know what, I probably need a larger surface. So I screwed in some screws onto the top and bottom. And wouldn't you believe it, it fixed the problem. At that point, I started working on some of the window, what do you call it, the window frames and just sort of adding boards to it. And here you can see that I was really contemplating whether or not I should use some of those bricks for a foundation, which of course I went with because it simply looked much, much better. And there was actually two added benefits to this. I don't know if you've seen it now, but you could sort of see the wood planking sort of look out underneath the walls, which I wanted to fix. Here I am also uh, using one of those LED lights. My plan was to use this in the open fireplace. And I just used a Sharpie of a appropriate color just to color the light. And here I'm just using hot glue just to sort of get a nice flame effect. To get a little bit more red into it, I just added some ink. And as you can see, it looks quite nice. Now, all buildings should have an entrance, so I used a little bit of uh, hot glue and some of these bricks to create a nice sort of entrance uh, steps to, you know, really make it look homey. For those of you who are paying attention, you can see that I've added a third row of bricks and a foundation. Now, this totally masks the seams in a nice way. Okay, okay, okay. Now I finally think that all of the construction was complete and I could look forward to painting it. That being said, this wasn't exactly a walk in the park. You'll see what I mean shortly. The good thing though was that I knew I had to start with some good old fashioned mod podging to strengthen and seal the build. Mod podging everything is messy and I personally use just a little bit of black paint in my mod podge. I'm not after full coverage because I rarely can get that. What I'm after is just the properties of the mod podge and the reason I use a little bit of color is just to be able to see where have I, you know, smeared on some mod podge and not. Now, what I will do after this is to actually go over the entire thing and prime it using my airbrush and some black primer. This is the moment where I feel like everything is coming together and you can start looking at the whole much more, which is always a nice feeling. Now, in order to get all of those details out, I started with Zenithal uh, priming this with some gray ink. And then I, just to testing it out, sprayed on some uh, burnt umber ink. Now, here is where I made some mistakes. Now, I liked the way the Zenithal highlighting brought all of the details out. It actually looked like I had some proper light in the world and it just made everything look so much better in my opinion. But we all have our comfort zones and reactionary responses. And mine was to go over everything with an overbrushing uh, with some light brown colors and then going over that again with some uh, dry brushing of a gray color. The thing is, there's nothing wrong with this way of painting wood. I just didn't like the look when it came to an entire cabin made of wood. So I did not settle with what I had, but I instead restarted the painting process using my airbrush and darker colors. Okay, so restarting. I figured I would want to do the same Zenithal thing, but instead of repriming it and potentially losing details, I figured I would go with the darkest brown that I wanted, and that was Rhinox Hide. So I pretty much covered the entire building with Rhinox Hide. Trying my best not to care about all of the bricks and, well, lost work I I had. Now, the first Zenithal Prime really was with Mornfang Brown, just to create that nice highlight from about 60 to 90 degree angle. I really tried to exaggerate where light would hit all of the timbers. Now, the final step for this was actually to do, I guess, 
some sort of edge highlighting and I did this using the color peanut butter I think it's called from Scala 75 and I exaggerated this quite harshly here and there just to you know define the the light and how it hits the different shapes once I had all of that done it was time to restart the painting of all of those bricks the base color for this was field gray which is I feel like a little bit green toned gray, I want to say, from Army Painter. Anyways, I went over all of the bricks and just gave them a solid base coat. It was at this time I started thinking about the actual windows. And as you can probably see, the window, the middle sort of bar in the middle of the windows have been removed since far. Now, one thing about these matchstick windows, I sort of cut them sort of in a tapered way just to make them easier to, you know, get into place. And just to glue them, I used some white glue just to sort of seal them properly inside there. And as you can see, it looks a little bit messy, but once that dries, it's going to look amazing. Now, one thing I wanted to do was to introduce some dirt and some moss. And for this, I'm using dirt spatter and venom worm from Army Painter. Now, the first thing I do is just to get that dirt spatter on. And then I go in afterwards with that venom worm here and there just to indicate, you know, that moss could be growing here and there. Now for the all of the bricks, and you can also see that I've actually colored them in different colors just to create some variation here and there. I'm going to come in with some uh, stone golem, a much more brighter gray, just to do a, a dry brush on all of them, just to get those highlights defined a little bit. And the funny thing is, I was using the same technique for the wood, uh, but I had problems with it. When it came to these bricks, for some reason, I felt like, no, it looks better, actually. And I think it has to do with, with the variation on the actual brick pattern. Now here, I'm just using my homemade black wash. And I'm pretty much not covering everything with it, but parts that I wanted to have a little bit of extra shadow definition. Now the, the open fireplace, I'm just stippling in some black where soot would have uh, naturally sort of gathered. Now on to some details. I looked in my bits bin. I don't have, unfortunately, a 3D printer, so I had to sort of scavenge through what I had, and I had a few rats and some skulls with candle on top of them, and of course, some, uh, you know, skulls from animals and whatnot. And I placed them here and there where I thought it would make sense. I also had a shield, which was a nice touch. Oh, and I also created an outhouse. Okay, okay, okay. Now everything is almost done. But still, there are some major details left, like the roof. And I had already made up my mind on what kind of roof I wanted. Me being from the North and all, well, uh, let's just say that I wanted to pay homage to the kind of cottages that we have in our culture. Plus, I wanted my log cabin to look unique. So I went with a turf roof. Here I'm going to come in with some white glue and I'm just going to start by, you know, adding that layer of turf, which would have been, I guess, earth in some form. So I'm going to use some of that ground up coconut fiber. And here I'm just dropping on some IPA alcohol to get rid of any surface tension, because then I'm going to be dropping on some diluted PVA and uh, water mixture, which will lock and seal all of that grout when it dries. Now, in regards to the open fireplace, you can see that I've bent the wires a little bit. And this I've done in this way just so I can have them popping out on the other side and I can slide in a battery into them. Now, going back to that roof, I started out with uh, my static grass applicator and some static grass from, I think it's Woodland Scenics, actually. Here I wanted to have a base layer of static grass, so I did one side of a roof at a time. And here it's 
be brave just go for it you know it it felt really weird and scary to do this because the build was looking good so far but this could really destroy everything but thankfully i think there was uh, some hope but the roof was looking a little bit too like somebody had just mowed it. So I manually just added some, you know, longer strains of static grass. I added some tufts just to sort of rough it up a little bit. And this really brought it to life in my opinion. Now when I did my windows, I had one that was just my test subject. I figured I wanted to use that just to be evocative to the players. So I glued it into the side of the foundation with some broken shards of glass. Perhaps a window broke. Perhaps the players can use that glass shard for something. I don't know. Now, I love nature, so I wanted to create a bird's nest, and this I did by using some coconut fiber, which I easily shaped between my fingers, and just glued it on the top of the roof, where perhaps, I don't know, swallows would live. Another fun detail that I wanted to do was to have some modular smoke. So I just took a nut and hot glued on some polyester fiber, And as you can see, I can drop it down the chimney and, you know, is someone home or not? Just to give it a little bit more shape, I just uh, sprayed on some black color. Now, that bird's nest needs, of course, some eggs. And these and that little detail of the handle I did using some of that Sculpey that I've used in the previous videos. All right, folks, so if you're still with me, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you so much for watching and please tell me what you think of the final result down in the comment section. And if you like the result, then do click the like button and subscribe. And the best way to help me make more content is to join my Patreon. And on that note, I want to thank my patrons for their support over the past weeks. So thank you, Andrew Cummings, Michael Milligan, Nicholas O'Sullivan, Rice P, Shane Murphy, Stefan Winter, Sunny Head case, Volker Görler, Blake Krau, Boo Algren, Chris Grop, and a special shout out goes to Madners and Leander. You're amazing, thank you again. Stay safe and I will see you in the next video.